So today I'm gonna to be showing you guys a desktop environment that is so retro, it's beautiful. So let's check it out. Now this desktop environment is actually called common desktop environment and something you do have to compile and I am using this off an arch base. So I did compile everything through AUR and it works properly well. Now it doesn't install every application that it should come with or ship with, but it does give you the login manager and the desktop itself. At first glance, this looks like a really old desktop, something that you would get from an OS2 or IBM computer back in the day from like the nineties. And yes, it does show, like I have all the markings of how old it looks, but it's a modern day operating system. I have new programs like Firefox and everything else on here. So. To check it out, the first thing you will be presented with is this help viewer. Now I would go down this help viewer because it does have a lot of information that you might need like making icons and stuff like that. So go through this if you need. I'm still trying to figure out a lot of this stuff in this operating system so I would have to like read that. Now you do get full access to a terminal so here we are. Now I am going to install something called Roo NeoFetch and let's just install that real quick. All right, there we go. Since it's Arch based, I was able to install anything that I need that you could get from Arch Linux. So here I'm going to type in NeoFetch. And there we have it. This is um, Arch Linux 6.7 kernel. It's been up for 44 minutes. Uh -huh. The window manager is called DTWM. And the terminal that I'm using is called DT Term. And yeah, this is how it looks. Now, they don't have much settings into this operating system. Like I can't even set the network through a GUI. You have to do everything manually along with audio and stuff like that. But I am going to go through some of the setups that they do have right here. So first off, we have color. And this allows you to change the color style of the menus up on top and also the look of everything. But we do have to restart the session when we do this. So I'm not going to be doing that much, but I am showing you that you can change the color style of um, the menus or the title bar. Next, we have font. So this is the only way you could get like scaling, you could say. So if I wanted the font to be like much bigger so I get I could see it better and scale up everything this is what I would use you have your backdrop which is our background that we're using right now and they have a few selections here and each desktop you can actually choose a different type of background and you could see this is like such a retro style version of everything but uh, yeah it is what it is for this keyboard there's not much you can do there's a click volume and auto repeat I have no idea what a click volume is but I know um, or maybe it's repeating I don't know Anyway, uh, it doesn't auto repeat and that's the only uh, options you have for keyboard. Mouse, you can set up your double click acceleration like your normal stuff on a regular mouse. But look at that. look how old school this icon is. And then you have beep to see if it makes beeps and stuff like that. Your screen, this is for your screen saver. So you can't even set the resolution on this desktop, but it does have a screen saver manager that you could actually go in and uh, set up what you want. But this is like very retro style. Um, uh, uh, wallpapers back in like what Windows 95 days remember these so I'm gonna cancel this you have your Windows borders that you can change like say I want this to show contents while dragging I'm gonna hit OK it's gonna restart this real quick and now when I move this around it, it drags the window around instead of that border and then you have your startup like do you want to resume the session stuff like that but yeah that's about it as far as settings go there's not much you can do if I get out of this and if I want to go into my application drawer, this is all I get as far as an application drawer. It's an actual menu with all the programs that I want. Now, I don't have all the programs installed. So say like if I go into system, these are default built into this as an icon. And you can see this favors Debian versus Arch. I just compiled it in Arch, but you should probably be using Debian because it already has like a link to Synaptic. So if I click it, it's just going to say the program is missing. And if I go to VirtualBox, I don't have VirtualBox. It's going to say that's missing as well. But for a program that I do have, like Kaja, it will open this up. And you see now I have my own little file browser that is not DT file. And you could see I could open any uh, application that are modern day on this with their theming, which is really cool. That's what makes this really fun because it looks really old school, but I'm able to actually check this out. Play Steam games. So over here, I actually made a link for Steam. And making links for this is not hard. It's just tedious uh, to make links for this um, software. But yeah, here I have Steam. I could pop in there, log in, and then I could actually play games off Steam like a modern day computer versus an uh, old school looking like computer. I think that's the best way to explain it. Now, while we're waiting for Steam to start up, you could see that there's this little indicator down here on the bottom 
This actually blinks as stuff happens. I actually don't know why this does this. Uh, while, while we wait for Steam to figure itself out, I'm gonna open another game that I did download called L Breakout. And I can run one of these. You can see like, I could just play games. I'm gonna quit this. Yeah, I really don't know what's going on with this. It was working not too long ago when I was playing around with that, but it, it is kind of weird how that did that. Heading into the other stuff, like if I have something installed like Office, I do have LibreOffice installed. I am gonna pull up calculator and you can see this does run very fast and it looks like an old school desktop, but with modern day applications. I find this to be very fascinating, especially like when you're trying to get something to work. I don't know why this is doing this. I've never had this happen. Again, if I don't have the application installed, you could see like AcroRead is not installed, so it's not gonna work. But if I go into install it from here, is it called AcroRead? It is called AcroRead. So let's see if I can do a search on this. Uh, they have AcroRead font system wide. Uh, I don't know what it's called for AcroRead. That's not gonna help. Anyway, that's basically it. Now we do have desktop applications over here. Uh, uh, standard calculators, calendar. This is their built-in calendar that they have, DTCM. Uh, do they have a built-in calculator? They do. This is their built-in calculator. Uh, they have a few built-in applications that is pre-installed. Anything that's not built-in, um, you will have to manually install. That This is their file manager. Where is it? No, that's not their file manager. This is their file manager. And it looks very retro style. Like I could go into downloads. Okay, I think I officially broke Steam over here. I can go up. I go into other stuff. And this is their file manager on how it looks. If I want to run Steam, I could run it through this little uh, icon that I made just so I could have shortcuts into their application manager. If you have cups installed, they do have a printer, default printer manager, but there's no printers found because they don't have cups installed. Uh, this again is the documentation that you could look up for all the information that you need for CDE. But ultimately, this operating system is pretty fun. I mean, I was able to get some stuff working, not today. Steam just doesn't want to work, but Otherwise, I was able to get a, a few other things to work. Now, again, the downside to this is I can't configure anything. Like, I can't get my network to work properly um, unless I do it through the client over here. So if I wanted to use, if I want to get connected through Wi-Fi, I would do IWCD or is it WICD? WICD? I don't remember what the application is called. So if I go over here, internet, no, not here. Actually, Firefox works perfectly fine too. I got that installed. And if I want to watch something off YouTube, I could just go to youtube.com, it's Nova Spirit Tech. Loads right away, shows my latest video, which is this Arch install uh, video. And it does have a modern day browser in here now because uh, on a retro look. Runs videos perfectly fine. Again, I'm not gonna have audio on there so I don't have to mute myself out. It shows a bunch of stuff over here. Like I just could get everything working and it works really good. But since I don't have Chromium installed, if I do that, you see how it says it's missing Chromium browser? All right, going back to system, I believe, yeah, WI, I don't even have this installed, that's why. WICD, that's how you would set up your Wi-Fi, but I don't even have it installed. If I do, it would come up and then I could set it up that way. But yeah, they don't even have that. I can't set up the resolution unless I do XRNDR, I believe. You have to use this command to kind of figure it out. Audio is another thing that you have to set up. So it's very like old school on how everything is done. And if you want to get it to work properly, you would have to know the actual commands for it. Yeah, another thing about this is if you minimize this, it actually makes desktop icons like this. So if I have Mozilla Firefox, it will be minimized over here. If I want to minimize this, I'll have another desktop over here. So it has little icons and then I could just reopen them. Now, if I cover this, there's actually no way for me to re-click on that application unless I move this out of the way. So it's kind of annoying because they don't have no task viewer but I guess that's part of the old style of doing things because we actually never had a task viewer like this before. And if you look very closely to how this looks, if you look at KDE, like the first version of it, early, early versions, it's very similar to how KDE looks like in earlier versions. That is it for me. If you guys want to play around with this desktop environment, I'll leave a link down in the description below for the source forge of where you can get this and you have to compile it yourself. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, Hack till it hurts.